This story is called Adventure on the Highway. When I was in my 20s, uh, we were working for four years as volunteers um, for an organization and we were very, very poor. So we were so poor, in fact, that one week we only had kumara, which is sweet potato, uh, and peas to eat. So that was a that was a bit of a hard week. Uh, and my family, my extended family, were going to go to a town in the north of the South Island for Christmas and to see my grandparents. So my grandparents were going to be there, my parents were going to be there, my brother and his wife was going to be there. And everyone said, well, you guys can't, you won't be able to make it because it costs too much and you won't be able to get there. And we thought, that's not right. So we thought, right, we're going to find out, we're going to find a way for us to actually manage to get there. So first off, we found some friends who were going to shift from this place that we were living, which was north of Auckland. So that's almost at the uh, top of the North Island of New Zealand. And they were going to shift to Christchurch, which is halfway down the South Island. So we had the opportunity to drive their little uh, furniture truck all the way down there and they paid for us to go on the ferry. So we were very grateful for that. But then we had no more transport and we thought, well, what are we going to do? And I've always been somebody who likes to kind of push against any kind of fear that I have. And so we kind of went, well, we've never done hitchhiking before. Shall we try hitchhiking? Will it be safe? Uh, well, there's two of us, so we should be all right. Um, so we thought, OK, we'll give it a go. So we drove all the way to Christchurch, uh, went across the ferry to the South Island and we then started to hitch out of Christchurch. So Christchurch is a city of about 300,000 people and it wasn't that easy to hitch out of uh, Christchurch. We stood on the side of the road for perhaps around about two hours and finally this man in a small ute arrived. Now a ute is a utility a utility truck um, and so it's got a tray on the back and it's got the small cab on the front and this particular uh, ute was really quite small so we had piled in with this guy and the cab was so small that I kind of had to sit sideways and I was almost um, sitting on the gear stick and I was squeezed up between this man and who I didn't know of course and my husband who was squeezed up against the window. So we were driving like that for two and a half hours which um, was pretty uncomfortable we stopped at this place called Moraki Boulders and the man um, gave us morning tea there and took us down to the beach and Moraki Boulders is uh, one of the amazing spots to, to stop in New Zealand. It's got these really big, huge um, spherical boulders on the sand on the beach and um, they're made out of sandstone and they're, they they're filmed a lot. There's lots and lots of photography about them. So we get back into the truck and we carry on down to Dunedin. And it's another two and a half hours of being squeezed into this, this little cab. So finally we reach Dunedin. And Dunedin's um, a city that is very pretty. It's quite wild. It's got great architecture and um, we think it's all old worldy. But old worldy for us is really only the 1800s because New Zealand is such a young country. So we go down there and we look at all the old heritage buildings and think, wow, that's so old, which is probably quite different to um, other places in the world. Um, so that's the next day. Um, we stayed with friends down there that we knew from the college. They took us out onto the Otago Peninsula and the Otago Peninsula is where there's so much wildlife. There's penguins, there's seals, there's sea lions, there's little boo penguins. Um, and so they took us to the spot where we hid behind the sand dunes and we were peering out through the sand dunes and right on dusk and 
as we were watching these little penguins started coming out of the surf out of the ocean and they were yellow eyed penguins and they I think they're one of the most rare penguins in the world so we got to watch these little penguins walking up from the surf all their way to their burrows um, and so it was a special place that only the locals knew about. The next day we ended up back on the road hitching out of um, Dunedin. It was 30 degrees in Dunedin, 30 degrees Celsius, it was pretty hot and uh, but we got a ride pretty quickly and off we went to our next friend's house. So they lived just out of a place called Invercargill and we borrowed their car and went down to the most southern point um, of New Zealand which is called Bluff and the sea was dead flat and the fog had rolled in and it was only eight degrees so we went from 30 degrees in Dunedin to eight degrees in Invercargill which was very cold and that was when we learnt that the South Island changed temperature a lot more rapidly than the North Island and you really need to make sure that you've got enough clothes with you. Uh, so our friends that we were staying with down there, they needed to travel all the way up to Nelson again, which was where our final destination was that we wanted to be. So we piled into a car with them and so we were in the back of this small car and we had this beautiful black dog that sat right between my husband and I. Now there was a wee problem with the black dog <laughs> and a wee problem with me because my mum always used to call me Quicksilver because I'm a bit of an action person and I'm always doing stuff. And I also am always the first person out of a car. So we would stop um, on the journey um, up the west coast and who would get out first? I would open the door and the dog would shoot out the door and the dog always, always levered itself off me so its paws would just be digging into my legs and off it would shoot and then I could get out. So it took me probably about 10 goes before I finally worked out <laughs> that I needed to be not the quickest person to get out of the car that um, actually I was just gonna just wait a while and I'd let somebody else open their door first and then the dog would shoot out their door instead of using me as a launching pad so yeah that was a bit fun I had quite a few bruises from that dog we finally made it to Nelson and my family hadn't arrived yet so we went to stay with some other friends who lived on an apricot orchard these beautiful big apricot trees that we had fun climbing and we borrowed their car and we went for a bit of a tiki tour which is what we call in New Zealand uh, a bit of an explore of our surrounding area so we took this car and we drove up into the mountains and this particular place we went to was about 900 meters up some mountains, um, this car park and it was an absolutely beautiful walk up there and it was gorgeous, we really enjoyed ourselves. We got back to the car park a little bit late and our car was the only car left and that's when we discovered that uh, the lights had been left on on the car, oh crap and this was also before there were cell phones oh crap again so we ended up having to work out how were we going to get ourselves out of this situation so this this particular car parks up this mountain there's a road that is just on the side which has got a cliff beside it so we ended up having to push the car around ready to go down the mountain beside this cliff um, on the gravel road and we had to get in and we had to jump start it um, thankfully it was a manual car so we could jump start it and uh, and we jump started it all the way down this this particular um, road uh, so that it, we could get going and we could get back to the the, um, the orchard so that was a bit of an adventure as well once we had had our Christmas holiday with my family they had arrived um, 
we then needed to carry on and we needed to get back to um, back to the college that um, we were volunteering at so we started hitching out of Nelson now that was one of the hardest experiences <laughs> in terms of hitching we were on the side of the road in the heat for I think a good three hours I was starting to think that we would never get anybody pick us up um, and then this man arrived um, with his car and we thought okay yep we'll hop in here and we're driving along and, and he's very friendly and and we're feeling all right and then he says hmm ah oh, I could show you the Queen Charlotte Sound and we went oh the Queen Charlotte Sound's a bit of a long drive so there were two two ways that we could go to the place we were planning on getting to so we were we were heading for Blenheim and one way was about maybe 30 minutes from the turn off the other way was an hour and a half to two hours on a very 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 windy road um, around some very beautiful um, islands and headlands um, that was kind of the tourist route and you didn't really want to take it that much and we didn't get a say in the matter he decided to take us down this tourist route um, because I think he thought we were he was doing us a, um, a favor and we started to get more and more nervous. We were starting to think, well, we've heard some stories about things going wrong with hitchhiking. Are we starting to get into one of those? There was a very bad story um, about um, a situation that had happened with um, a couple of young tourists, um, maybe, maybe a good 15 years before. Um, and so we were getting really, really nervous. <laughs> But he was fine and he finally took us to Blenheim after we'd been on this amazing long trip. But it did make us so nervous that the next time we needed to travel we decided to use a bus to get ourselves to the ferry to, um, to get between the South Island and the North Island. And we were very blessed to, on the, on the boat, on the ferry, we met a man and that man just happened to be the principal of another Bible college who um, lived in Auckland. So we struck up a friendship with him and he drove us all the way from Wellington, all the way to Auckland and dropped us off north of Auckland uh, near the entrance it was about 10 minutes drive time back to where we were volunteering so we finally got onto the side of the road there and we were only 10 minutes drive away and I think it took us another four hours just to get that last 10 minutes back to to um, the place that we needed to be so that was my hitchhiking experience and nothing went particularly badly wrong but we kind of decided that that was the one time we were going to do it and I've never done hitching again. <laughs>